How is everyone? <laughs> Yay. What y'all think about this bipolar weather this week? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. That's just funny, isn't it? You got to love it in West Texas. Amen. Hello, hello, hello. Amen. Hello. There I am, finally. Welcome Praise aboard. the Lord. I'm glad to be here tonight. How about y'all? <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you need this. I need a mic or something. <laughs> Hallelujah. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? Well, there we are. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's reach our hands towards the sound booth tonight, and let's just thank God for sound people. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are, we are very <laughs> thankful. You know, they other, control everything. Yeah, other than God controlling everything in the service, so do the sound people. And um, so we're thankful for them. And, um, you know, there's a white throne in heaven, but the sound booth is another white throne. So, um, I don't know why this, it just, it's power there. So, praise the Lord. Do you have some announcements? Please yes. save me right now. Yes. Okay, hey, thank you. First of all, we were singing in worship, and, and we sang a lot of those songs at Cedar Canyon, so I was just encouraged to do a shout-out to all my girls. Are y'all doing good? You know, it's one thing to ask you on Sunday morning after we just got back. It's another thing to ask you like three or four days later. Are you still doing good? <laughs> Amen. We saying. had such a good time. Uh, just so blessed. I was so blessed. Um, when I walked into the service on Saturday morning, I knew we weren't done. I just knew we weren't done. It was good. It had been good up until that point. But when I left, I was satisfied. I don't know what, what else we got, but it was just so, so good. And so just wanted to um, remind all the ladies, if you ordered a set of the conference CDs and you paid for them, they're already out in the bookstore. You can go pick those up. If you ordered them but you need to pay for them, then you can get in a different line at the bookstore. Or if you'd like to order some, <laughs> then they have little forms, and they are prepaid, um, so you'll need to pay for it, and then you can pick it up on Sunday. They're only $15. It's, um, we thought it was going to be eight CDs because there was four testimonies and four services, but actually Miss Marie's was so rich that she needed two CDs each. So there's like, there's like 10 <laughs> CD. It's a 10 CD set, so you got a really good deal for your $15. That'll just cover the cost of making them. Um, so go pick those up as soon as service is over. We're so grateful. Uh, you know, to spread the word and just uh, to, to chew on that. To me, it was just things that I wanted to hear again and again. And uh, so anyway, so grateful about that. Pastor Todd, I want you to tell the people, because it starts on Monday, about Believer's Authority. I would love to tell the people about Believer's Authority. I'm going to tell you right now and tell the people right now that we're going to have our HMS class, um, and I'm going to be teaching um, on the Believer's Authority. And um, in fact, it's one of my favorite topics to teach on. Um, the two... Um, topics that I, I predominantly feel assigned to, you know, Miss Stephanie feels assigned to righteousness. Well, there's two topics that I'm assigned to um, when I step outside of the pastoring side of things, and one of that is faith, encouraging people in their faith, but which is a whole lot stronger in this realm, is the believer's authority. Um, I had the privilege of preaching that messages there in Egypt right before the country fell, fell apart. So, I mean, it's important to know your authority in Christ. And um, so it's, it's a very important um, message for the body of Christ in the time that we live in. If you don't know anything about the Believer's Authority, or maybe you've heard a little bit about it, or maybe you've taught, or, or maybe you've been taught by it, or um, you want more information about it, sign up in our college there, our HMS classes. Um, then you sign up in the, in the, in the sound booth. You, you or, can, there's or a couple no. of things you can do. If you want to just audit the class, it's $50 for the month. You can uh, go ahead and pay for that and take care of it at the bookstore. Or you can show up on Monday and take care of it on Monday night. Classes start at 7 o'clock, so we'd encourage you, if you're new, to come um, a few minutes early, and we'll get you all set up. We'll give you a book and everything. And but for, it's, and for it's those so, who just so want, want more information about just HMS, it's not like a church service. It's a school. Um, I mean, you're going to get books. You're going to have assignments and things along those lines. If you're really serious about your walk with God and you really want to learn more about the believer's authority and, and not only just who you are in Christ but how to exercise your authority, not only just over Satan but over every other thing in your life, um, I encourage you to take this course. Um, it is an amazing course. It's for four Monday nights, and um, it'll be worth your time. It'll be worth your money. Um, and it's just a real good um, time in the presence of the Lord on Monday nights. I mean, just some really meaty stuff in the Word of God. So if you're serious about your walk with God and you want some meat, um, then come, come on Monday nights. You know, if, if a restaurant had free steaks, I mean, come on, help me out. It had free steaks, and it's come and eat as much as you want, Many of us would be there, correct? 
And the rest of you guys, you lie. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> All of us, I mean, if it was really, I mean, or whatever your favorite move, you would make an effort to get there. Well, when it comes to spiritual food, you've got to make an effort to get there. And so I would encourage you to um, be a part of what's going on in, um, in Harvest Ministry Seminary and Believers Authority. Amen. Hallelujah. I just have two more quick announcements. Um, life groups is this Sunday night. It seems like a long time since we've had life groups, but we're very excited. So a couple of announcements. One, all of my leaders that are in here, Tia should have sent you a message today. She needs to know your location so we can finish the bulletin tomorrow. So make sure you contact her and let her know. And then also you got a small list uh, a few weeks ago of leadership. So now you need to do get busy and invite. So how many people in here are not in a life group? Not in a life group. Let, let's say this. How many of you have not been called in the last 30 days? Raise your hand high. You haven't been received a phone call in 30 days. That's oh, a lot of people. On. All right. Okay. So work. that means we need to get around and make sure everybody knows somewhere they can go. And there'll be even more on Sunday morning. And so that's just a, one of our greatest outreaches, we believe, at the church. And so we want you to get a part. And so we're just putting the uh, pressure on the life group leaders. Get out there and get those people in your that's groups. Right. Amen. Um, on Sunday, we announced that we had a volunteer of the month, and we were so grateful for her, but her grandmother was in the hospital, which we have very good news about. She's doing well, much better, which, real quick before I go there, Jessica Flores just told me that she just got a text. We prayed for her granddad just a moment ago. She just got a text from her mom. Her granddad came out of surgery, is doing well. Hallelujah. Yes. And uh, so sometimes we put something in the bulletin and they're not here, but they had a very good reason and we're very glad to hear that grandmother's doing good. But Sarah, would you come up here, please? Would y'all give her give a big, Sarah a hand. warm welcome? Because we're so grateful. Now, I'm, I'm going to stand in the gap tonight because um, it was unanimous by our staff that Sarah Duran uh, should be our volunteer of the month. But I'm going to speak on behalf of Pastor John and Miss Tia because she serves in children's ministry and she is Miss. Uh, she is Tia's assistant in HMS. First, Pastor John just said, what can I say? Everything that I ever ask her, she goes above and beyond and just does it with such joy and just, you know, shows up. And he's so, so grateful. And, in fact, one of the things he said is that you're so willing to go into another area that's not your area, and you just, you know, have no problem with that. And then Tia just went on and on and on. She really wanted to be here, but she's in youth tonight. And, uh, and she said the same thing. She said, you just step up and, and, uh, and volunteer like no one she's ever known before, and she's been to Bible school. So she said her heart is for true ministry, and so please tell her we want to say thank you and honor her. So y'all give her another welcome. We thank you so much for serving God. Amen. We love you. You know, really, we're trying to honor everybody, but we look specifically and just pray and say, you know, who's kind of stood out. And, and so um, that's God doesn't have favorites, but God does honor people. Amen. And so we're just so grateful for all of you know, all of our volunteers. I, I was thinking about, you remember when Pastor Bracken came and did a leadership meeting a while back, um, um, mm -hmm. a couple of months ago, and he said that we need to celebrate. You remember that? Y'all yes. remember some of that? Yeah. And, and I talked to him later on about that, and then we were talking about it too. And I asked myself, I said, well, do we celebrate enough? And in a, in a sense, yes, because we celebrate people. Um, and I, we began to think about different times that we've had over the past year or so, just celebrating people. Do we do a big party for the church? No, we just kind of do more individualistic celebrations for people that do great things in our church and our community. So um, we're right along the lines with what, what my pastor has told us to do and in line with what the Lord has told him to do. So we're just celebrating people. Amen. Amen. Because we love you guys. Yes, we do. I just got the warm fuzzies. Uh, yes, go sit down, please. Hallelujah. Are you ready to give tonight? I said, are you ready to give tonight? Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, are you ready to give? Hallelujah. Well, how many know God loves a cheerful giver? Amen. Anybody happy tonight? 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17 through 19. This is the New American Standard Bible. This um, translation says this. Instruct those who are rich in this present world not to be conceited or to fix their hope on uncertainty of riches, but on God, who richly supplies us with everything to enjoy. Instruct them to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share, storing up for themselves a treasure of um, storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of what is what is life indeed. Notice something here. The very first part of this scripture says, instruct those who are rich in this present world. Well, I want you to know you're rich. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, you're so rich. 
Now, I know a lot of people are thrown by that, that, that terminology, I'm rich and things along those lines. Well, if you could come with me to some mission trips that I've been on, you're rich. Uh, if, you, if you can come with me to some places where I preached and, and um, there's roosters running around the sanctuary. Uh, and, and you preach and you can barely breathe because of the diesel smoke from the buses going um, outside the, the front of the church because there's no windows in the church. Amen. You're rich. And I know that sounds like, you know, you've seen the, the TV commercials with all, you know, feed the hungry and things along those lines. Well, compared to other things, you are rich, so you qualify for this scripture. Hallelujah. So I think you need to look to your neighbor again and say, you're rich. Now, is it okay to be rich? Obviously, because here Paul told Timothy, a pastor of a church, to command those who were rich. So obviously there were people in the church that were rich. Hallelujah. I, I'm one of those people. I'm rich. Hallelujah. I'm one of those, those people that, that, that God told Paul to tell Timothy to command. Hallelujah. So you've got to see yourself that way. You've got to see yourself rich. Your checkbook might say something different, but I mean, no, oh, God sees you rich. But he goes on and instructs those who are rich in this present world not to be conceited or fix their hope on uncertainty of riches, but on God. I mean, no, you've got to put your hope, your faith on God. All of us here probably have had more than one job. Jobs will come and go, but there's one God that doesn't come and go. He remains faithful. He stays the same. You might have one job, and something bad might happen, and you might lose your job. But guess what? That don't change God. It don't change His ability to provide for you. It doesn't change His ability to get to you whatever you need. Hallelujah. It's interesting. Our identity is not found in where we work. Hallelujah. I mean, he's ever been introduced. Well, he, you know, he's such and such, and he works at such and such place. Well, a lot of people locate their identities by where they work. And, and, and that's just the way the world sees things. But how many know our identity is found in God? Our identity is found in Christ. And God says we're wealthy. Hallelujah. God says we're rich. And it's okay to be that way. Let me say this. It's perfectly fine to, to make that confession and things along those lines. But how many know that don't make you um, um, higher or better than somebody else that's not? Hallelujah. It's, it, that's, that's not the case. You can't go around and flaunt the, the very fact that you're, you're more wealthy than somebody else. That's pride. Hallelujah. In fact, your wealth, what makes us wealthy is for others, not for ourselves. The reason why God blessed us is so we can be a blessing. Hallelujah. So it's perfectly fine to have wealth. It's perfectly fine to be rich. As long as you don't use it here in a conceding way or in a way that's going to promote yourself more than somebody else. Your wealth, my wealth, is for helping others. Hallelujah. I said, my wealth, your wealth is for helping others. Hallelujah. That's, why, that's why I believe God for money. Money's just a tool. I said, money's just a tool. It's just, it's just an item in this world. It will fade away one day. We get to use it for this time that we have right now. Because one day, money's really not going to matter in heaven. So God has given us this, this financial institution we call money or gold or whatever to use it effectively to help others. Hallelujah. So our time, our talents, and our finances is how we um, get across the gospels, how we, we go and be a blessing to others. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm thankful that we're wealthy. I'm thankful that we have money. Hallelujah. Now, money doesn't rule me. You know how I know? Because I give my tithes and offerings. That's how I can tell my money doesn't own me. Money doesn't rule me. That's, that's how I can tell I don't love money because I like to give it away. People that love money have a hard time giving. I love this pulpit. I could hide all day long. It's true. People that, people that love money have a hard time giving their tithes and offerings. And the Bible says that's the root of all evil. Oh, I'm preaching good tonight now. But we believe in this church that when you give your tithes and offerings, it's proof that you love God because God so loved the world that he what? He gave. It's how, what we get to take a part of our Heavenly Father and what he likes to do. He loves to give. So whenever we give our tithes and offerings, it's proof that we don't love money. And it's proof that we believe in what God does. And God loves to give. Hallelujah. Now, I know I made some people uncomfortable, but praise God, it's good for you. Hallelujah. I said, praise God, it's good for you. You need to be made uncomfortable at church. I said, you need to be made uncomfortable at church. And the reason why is because I want to stretch you. I want to help you. I want you to grow. Hallelujah. I want you to have all your bills paid for. I want all your cars paid for. I want all, all your houses paid for. I want you to have a, a vacation that where you just spare no expense. You can just have fun and bless your kids. 
You know, I was talking to some of our, our leaders in our men's group um, Sunday night after our men's group. And this is, I'm going to just say it, and this is one of my goals. I want, to be, I want us to be able to do in our men's ministry in our church. I want to bless our men's ministry with a trip to Dallas to watch the Cowboys play. Come on, man. Y'all got to help me out better than that. I don't care if you don't like the Cowboys or not, man. <laughs> you ought to get, and I'm not talking about, you know, nosebleed section. I'm talking about getting, a, a, you know, one of the, the yeah, those, those nice places. Yeah, those sweets, man. Yeah, on the front row on the 50-yard line where I can eat hot wings and watch Troy do something. I mean, not Troy, but uh, Romo. I want Troy to come back. <laughs> But I do, and this is what, when I was talking about it, it was the Spirit of God came up on the inside of me. And how many know that the, uh, the Bible says that He prepares a table before me? And, and I want to just take men to Dallas and let them watch a cowboy game and prepare a big old table in front of them and say, this is how good God is. This is how good God is. Not that we're trying to promote anything else, but this is how good God is. Let's just have fun today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Can y'all hook up with me on that? Oh, I man, praise Lord. We could have church at the stadium. We'd be praying the whole time for the Cowboys. I mean, we'd be having church, man. <laughs> Amen. Y'all hook up with me. Let's, let's just believe God that, that we can get to where we can do that. And the ladies, too. Maybe there'll be some kind of event that they can go and do. It's all right. The church can, the church can have, still have men coming to church on Sunday mornings. Hallelujah. Because the men, when, when you announce that, there will be no men here on Sunday morning. It'll be all, it'll be a lady's time. Hallelujah. And that'd be all right. Yes, ma'am. Yours is already on the, what, do what? <laughs> Praise the Lord. What is it? You're going to Fredericksburg in June to do some shopping. Come on. See? Hallelujah. Cowboys, here we come. They set the standards, so now it's Okay. You know, if the wife does it, then it's okay. <laughs> we, we don't have to ask. Y'all did it. We're there, man. <laughs> Amen. Why? We're just going to show how good God is. There's no strings tied to this or anything. We're just, God is good. He doesn't want you to sit out in the parking lot and listen to the Cowboy game on the radio. Now, there's nothing wrong if that's where you're at. At least you got there. I mean, some people just, they can't even get to Dallas. But at least you got there. But I mean, how many know it's time for us to get in the stadium and let God just be God? Can you imagine the witness it will be to all the other people around there drinking Miller Lite? And we're sitting in there in the, in, on 50-yard line and just saying, well, where, where did all these men group come from? We're from church. We are from Family Harvest Church. Hallelujah. And then you got a, a business next to you that they're all drunk. And you got a business over here that's all drunk. And we get over there, we just get them all saved. Man, I could have fun tonight, man. I mean, that's the purpose of it, really. I mean, because really, if you think about it, if you take a men's ministry on a Sunday morning to a football game, hallelujah, not only we're going to be able to have a blast, but we're going to be a light. Hallelujah. Now, I've taken some vacation time, went to a cowboy game and stuff like that, and I enjoy doing those things. But I mean, you know, there's a lot of heathens at those cowboy games. Come on, help me out here. Now, some of y'all ain't saying nothing because you're probably one of them at that time or not. <laughs> you're like, oh, I hope Pastor wasn't at that game that I was at because, man, I, I live too much that game. <laughs> That's why I'm here now. I have to repent. Golly, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Well, how I many you know we can still have that kind of fun? Hallelujah. Jesus loves us to have fun. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, it starts where? With us just giving our tithes and offerings. I mean, I believe that we're not going to have to fundraise for that. That's just going to happen. That's just going to happen. I mean, we have to fundraise. Well, we're going to fundraise for the cap. No, it's just going to happen. I mean, we're just going to spread that table out in front of the men. Y'all come enjoy and have fun. Hallelujah. And let's pray real loud so everybody next to us can hear us. Hallelujah. Well, let's pray over your tithes and offerings. I preach myself happy already. <laughs> Father, we thank you so much for tonight. We thank you, Lord, for your word. And, Lord, you are a good God. And you just want to prove your faithfulness and how good you are to your people. And, Father, we're blessed to be a blessing to others. And, Lord, I thank you that in the future we'll see and know how good you are and see how big your heart is for us. And, and Lord, I ask that you continue to, to give seed to the sower in the name of Jesus. And we just declare tonight that we're blessed in Jesus' name because you've blessed us. 
And we thank you, Lord, that we won't um, put our hope or our faith in uncertain riches, but we'll, uh, we'll put our faith in you, God, knowing that you're more than able. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen. You be blessed as you give tonight. Hallelujah. I do have a couple of other, other announcements. Um, this Friday, we are have our, our mighty men prayer meeting is kicking back up again on Friday mornings. It's going to start at 6.30 to 7. So, men, if, um, if you need to come out and pray, that would be a great time for you to come out and pray um, before you get to work. We have that every Friday. Um, last Friday, we, we, um, we were doing um, the mama thing, taking care of the kids, and uh, Mr. Mom, whatever it's called. And um, so we had a great time with our kids, but we're kicking it back up, 6.30 to 7. Also, me and I will encourage you in the uh, bookstore, you can pick up your brochure for the men's advance. It is coming right around the corner from March 28th through the 30th. Um, in there, you'll find uh, all the things that you need to know um, to sign up. If you would, please, um, you have this back page here that's got your name and all your information on it. You can rip that off and pay for your trip, and it gives you everything that you pay. I think the cost, if you get before March 13th, is, a, um, is $130, and that takes care of two nights and four meals, which is a really good deal. Um, so I encourage you guys um, to hook up with that. Don't forget, because we need to start getting numbers so we can um, get all that, that scheduled. Um, it has the, the schedule in here for the actual events. And I'm really excited this year. Daniel Eric Groves is going to be leading the praise and worship. A phenomenal praise and worship leader. He's got several things on iTunes. And, and um, so I encourage you to um, get hooked up with that, man. And um, we'll be able to have a great time. 15th annual. Are you all ready to get into the Word tonight? Hallelujah. Well, let's just jump right in the middle of it. And um, we're going to be talking tonight again about leadership. And um, in fact, oh, where's my other pulpit at? Is it? I think it's... Y'all both of y'all check. I think it's one over there and one over there. I don't know. I don't know where it's at. And um, I want to talk to you guys about, thank you, Tim. Um, tonight, we're going to continue about leadership, and I'm going to come down here where y'all live so I can look at your eyes when I talk. Turn your Bibles to Matthew. There, he found it. Tim, thank you, sir. Thank you. Turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 20. Thank you, sir. Matthew chapter 20. And let's, let's get into this thing here tonight. Y'all excited about being here? Hallelujah. Y'all don't have to be all quiet when we start doing this. Let's, let's just have fun tonight. Matthew chapter 20. How many here are leaders? I say, how many here are leaders? Well, let me say every one of you guys are leaders. And this is the reason why, because you influence people. And leaders influence others. Well, the real question is, is how are we going to awaken the leader inside of us? The very first thing that we've been talking about is that leaders, um, Jesus, we, we mold our leadership after Jesus and how Jesus led. And Jesus' leadership style was summed up in one word, serve. So how do real true leaders lead? By serving. So let's look here at Matthew chapter 20, verse number 25. Matthew chapter 20, verse number 25. But Jesus called them to himself and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord over them, and those who are great exercise authority over them. Now, I know those are kind of um, words, kind of kind of difficult for us to understand, but if we put into today, today's terminology, he's talking about how the world leads. And let me read it to you again. You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord over them. Well, how many know in the world's way, leaders lord over people, or leaders um, dictate over people? They, and that's where we get this word, they're dictators, and things along those lines. And then Jesus, he says something else here in verse 26, yet it shall not be so among you. But whoever desires to become great among you, let them be your servants. So for us to become great in God's eyes, we serve. Now in the world, somebody that becomes great is, has a, a lot of people that they uh, rule and reign over. But here in God's terminology, I guess there, and the way God does things, is that God, He leads, uh, we lead underneath God's direction as servants goes on here in verse 27 and whoever desires to be first among you let him be your slave just as the son of man did not come to be served notice this but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many well what did Jesus come to do he came to serve I mean you know, he is the greatest leader that has ever walked on this planet there has been nobody else as great as him nobody else has influenced more people than Jesus Christ Muhammad hasn't Hitler hasn't no president in America has ever come close. No, no king, 
No ruler of any kind of world history has come close to influence people as much as Jesus Christ has. You just take the whole church aspect of it, and you look at world history, and if you were to ask any, um, um, I mean, any doctor of history or whatever they are, any kind of instructor at any college, and you would say, who would be the greatest leader of all that's got the most influence over the whole world? Jesus Christ. So obviously here, we need to learn how to lead like Jesus led, because why? We're believers. So we've learned for the past couple of weeks, we learned well, how do leaders serve. The very first thing is, is a leader serves by being sensitive. The very first thing you must realize if you're going to lead others is that you've got to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. If you're a parent, if you're in the business world, um, or whatever area of life that you're in, you can lead. And the best way you lead is by being sensitive to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will tell you, don't say that. The Holy Spirit will say, don't buy that. The Holy Spirit will say, don't make that deal. Or the Holy Spirit will say, yes, make that deal. Now's the time to do it. Being led by the Spirit. How many know the Holy Spirit knows everything? And we talked about that. He knows the beginning from the end. He knows um, things to come. And then we also talked about if we're going to lead by serving, we've got to be sensitive to others. Hallelujah. And it's not a, it, you can't lead by saying, I don't care what they think, we're going to do it anyways. That is a worldly mentality. And that's what Jesus says, you ought not to be like that. And Jesus, in fact, said, no, it's the opposite. I've got to think how they're going to receive it. I've got to think how I can serve them in order for them to follow. It's, it's, a, it's a poor leadership style, according to the Word of God, if you demand your own way, and if they don't do it, too bad. Wow, I got your attention now. The opposite is true. If we're going to lead... Like Christ led, we serve others. Because when I serve John, John's gonna be e it's going to be easier for John to be committed to me because I gave something of myself to him. And he'll want to serve. If I, if I give my, myself in, in a service to, to Brandon and help him in some way, it's naturally that he's going to be tied to that. He's going to want to return that. Whatsoever you give, it shall be given back to you. It's a matter of serving. Husbands, you can't demand your wife to respect you. Come on, wives, help me out here tonight. Some of y'all are real nervous because you're like, was you with me today? You was going to tell me your wife submit. Well, how I many know that you can't do that? It comes by you serving your wife. And she'll respect you because you serve her. And we talked about this, and it just bears because somebody needs to go, some man needs to go back and clean up his, 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 his bedroom or whatever. You left your shoes out. Help your wife out. I said, help your wife out. Now, wives, you, you can't go around and, 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 and disrespect your husband. And all the husbands said, hey, amen, I didn't leave you guys out there hanging. I got you guys all. I got your back. Come on. Man. And it's the same way. It's, it's true on that. You can't go around and disrespect your husband and expect him to lead your house correctly. Because if you're going around belittling him and say, well, you don't know, you, you don't even pay the bills, you don't even know where we're at, or, or whatever the case may be. I mean, no, that's not being sensitive to him. And that's not going to help you be able to, to serve him. Hallelujah. So we talked about that. Get the CD, because I want to go a little bit further, because there's a whole lot there. Number two, how do leaders serve? Number two, a leader serves by seeing what others cannot see. You can write that down. A leader serves by seeing what others cannot see. Turn in your Bibles to Habakkuk chapter 2, verse number 2. A very famous set of scripture when it comes to vision. See, a leader has to see it so they can write it. Because if a leader can't write down the vision, then those that you lead will never be able to run with it. Now check this out, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it. Husbands, it's your responsibility to have a vision for your house. Hallelujah. And, and there's some things as a husband and as a, and as a father that are non-negotiable items. It's non-negotiable. Number one, obviously, um, God is first in your marriage. And in your kids, and raising your kids, God is number one. Not how your mommy and daddy raised you, but how God does it. Can I get a better amen than that? God's number one. And husbands, um, head of the household, you'll, be, you'll answer to God for that one day. On how well you led your family. 
So God obviously has got to be number one. Well, what's included in putting God first? Obviously in every aspect of your life. You go to church. Hallelujah, you're here tonight. Praise the Lord. I can't wait to see you on Sunday morning. Hint, hint. Also, and I'll get to see you next Wednesday because we'll do part number three. Do you see this? Because whenever you can get into, as head of the household, and you can train your family how to be obedient to God, God is going to protect your family. God's going to take care of you better than you can take care of them. But you have to have vision for that. You've got to have a vision for how important it is to have God in your family and have God first in your family. Now, I know that there's times you have to work in things along those lines. But don't let work become an excuse for you not to get closer to God. Because there'll be times that you're going to have to tell your boss, you know, hey, I know I can work some extra hours, but it's important for my family to take them to church. I mean, sure, we, you, let me say this, you can, you can be working all kinds of crazy hours because you need to pay the bills, but it's, it's interesting, if you cut back your hours and start believing God for the finances, you'll be, you'll be pleasantly surprised what God will do for you. Because don't you think God wants you here? Absolutely, and God will do some miraculous things in your finances to get you to where you can raise your family correctly. Now, you still got to work. Come on, help me out here. I say, you still got to work. You can't sit around the house all day long and go home. You know, kind of saying, no, you got, you got to get it, you got to work. Amen. But there comes a point to where you got to balance that out with, with raising your family correctly. Hallelujah. Wives, you got to take care of the house, too, as well as if you have a job, you got to take care of your responsibilities with your job and all those kind of things, too. Why? Because you have to have a vision for that for your life. If you don't have a vision, there's going to be, your house is going to be chaotic, your kids are going to be chaotic, you're going to be chaotic, and your husband's going to come home to chaos. Not that that's ever happened to anybody here before. Not at all, no. So we ought to learn that if we're going to be leaders that serve, we've got to see what others can't see. That means we've got to get a vision. Now let's look at something else here. Turn to Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. If a leader can't see, then the people will scatter. If a, pe if a, if a leader can't see, then the people will scatter. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18 says this. Where there is no vision... The people perish. Other translations say the people scatter. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. I've noticed this in families, when it comes to families, that if there's not a vision for the kids, the kids will be crazy. Come on, help me out here today. They will grow, they will be crazy. They will be rebellious. They'll do their own thing. They really won't care. They really don't care what you say. And it seems like it, your whole household is scattered all the time. Well, what's the problem? There's no vision. There's no standard in the house. Praise the Lord. We're getting into some meat tonight, aren't we? Well, how many know we got to lead? And how do we do? we got to see things that other things. How many parents here can see things uh, better than their kids? Well, you better be able to. I mean, I mean there's, your kids might be saying, well, I want to do this and I'll do this. And, and well, I don't want to hurt their feelings, so I let them do it. No! Come on, no. Say, no, you ain't going to go out there, boy. You're going to stay here. I know who you're hanging out with. You need to stay home tonight. You don't need to be going doing that. I mean, you got to set a standard. Come on, help me out here in this place. you got to set a standard. Why? Because if you don't have vision for your house, they will scatter. And then the interesting thing with kids, they bring back more. Do you understand what I mean by that? Why? Because they have no standards, so they'll get hooked up with somebody that has no standards. And the next thing you know, you got kids bouncing off the wall from people you don't even know where they came from. Now, I mean, you're going to love them anyways, but I mean, a lot of that chaos, a lot of that scatteredness is eliminated whenever you just have a vision for your house. Hallelujah. You can see what your kids can't see. Hallelujah. There's certain things that, that parents have to do. It's the same way in the business world. Um, you, as a believer, can go into the business world, and you can see things that unbelievers can't see. And that's where God will give you favor. Because the Holy Spirit will begin to tell you things and show you things. And you can see things because you have a vision to bless the place of business that you're at. And God will start sending ideas to you. Start giving you creative ideas and start helping the business. And the next thing you know, you're getting promotions. Why? Because you have a vision to help that business out. How many know the place where you work is not just for a paycheck? The place to help me here tonight. The place where you work is not just for a paycheck. A place is there, that is your ministry. 
Where you work is your ministry. Whether you're a housewife or whether you're in the business world, whatever you do, that is your ministry. Catch a vision for it. Well, I'm just, no, I'm just going to be there temporarily. Well, praise God. Catch a vision to help out temporarily. I mean, catch a vision. Do something in that place of business. Be effective. you got the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. Let Him tell you things to come. Let Him show you things to come. Let Him tell you what the place of business needs to do to, to change and to become better. Hallelujah. Why? Because they need you. That place of business needs you. You're the light. I said, you're the light. They need, your boss needs you. If you're the boss, you need you. <laughs> You need to hear from God. You, you, need to, you need to get vision for your place of business. Because if you're just going through the motions, just trying to get the bills paid, ask yourself, what is my vision this year? What, where are we going this year? What are we doing this year? And, and don't ask yourself, ask God, God, what are we doing with our life? What are we doing with this business? I mean, where do you want to take us this year? Hallelujah. And then you'll be surprised how things won't get so scattered anymore. You'll start getting the right customers. You'll start right, getting the right deals. Because God's at the first level. You put God in charge of your business. And then you'll look at, the, at, at your, your income at the end of 2013 and you'll say, Lord, have mercy. We doubled this year. And I didn't even have to work any harder. And then you'll say, that's God. Amen. And God say, yeah, that's right. It was me. Hallelujah. And I'm going to double you again next year. And it'll be easier. Hallelujah. It'll be easier. Somebody needs to hear that. It's going to get easier. If you put God first, it will be easy. It won't be so scattered. Why? Because you got vision. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, what are you looking at? Turn to Exodus chapter number 3, and I'll begin to close tonight. There's just so much here I can talk about. But Exodus chapter 3, for those visiting, you know that that's really, you know, that people are laughing because they know that's really don't mean anything. <laughs> Exodus chapter 3. How many remember Moses in the burning bush? A leader with vision receives instructions to set people free. Exodus chapter 3, verse number 1. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law. I thank God for Jethro, because it's not some weird name. I mean, I think Jethro's from Texas. And you, you guys know, I started up here trying to, I can't even, I mean, some of these Hebrew names are like, finally, Lord, you gave somebody a real name. <laughs> Anyways. And Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert, and he came to Oreb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of the bush. Notice this. So he looked. Let me say that again. So he looked. And behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Notice something here. He had vision. He saw something. A leader will always see something. Now, many people, how I many know that Moses here, he's tending a flock. That was his job at that time. But he was being sensitive to see something. You can go through the motions every day. And like Moses at that time, he could have said, yeah, that's just, you know, there's a fire up there, you know. We'll be. I got to take care of these, these, these sheep and stuff, all this stuff around me. But he didn't. He saw something in that burning bush. You guys got to be aware of when you're leaders that you'll receive instruction to set people free if you just see it, if you can just look at it and find it. Goes on here in verse number three. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside and looked, notice this, the Lord was watching him. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside and looked, God called to him. That tells me that God was watching him, waiting for him to do something. A lot of people make the mistake they're waiting on God to do something. No, Moses did something. He turned and went and looked at the bush, and then God said something. That's what a, le a leader will recognize, that I've got, I got to get out of my comfort zone. I've got to do something, and then God will do something. A lot of people that, that are, are believers and they may be walking with the Lord for a certain period of time, I've heard him say this, well, I'm just waiting on God. And in essence, there is a time that you have to wait on God. But if, if you're looking to go further in God, God wants you to go further. God wants you to go higher. God wants you to go to the next level. So you don't have to sit there and wait for God to take you there. No, God's waiting for you to do something. 
goes on here, so when the Lord saw that he turned aside, verse 4, to look, God called to him from the midst of the, burn, of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am. And he said, do not draw near to this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face and was afraid to look upon God. I think I, would, I could do the same. Could you imagine hearing the voice of God? I mean, I would be on my face. Verse 7, And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sor sorrows. For I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from the land to a good and large land, a land flowing of milk and honey, and a place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jezebites, and all the other ites. Yeah, Brandon said the termites. And, uh, verse 9. Um, now therefore behold the cry of the children of Israel has come to me and I have seen the oppression of the Egyptians at which the Egyptians have oppressed them come now therefore and I will, I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people the children of Israel out of Egypt notice something here the children of Egypt wouldn't have received marching plans until Moses had to see something there was no deliverance until the leader saw something. The children of Israel couldn't see it. They were in bondage. All they got up every day was getting up and, and working and being slaves. But it took a leader to deliver the children of Israel out of that bondage. But how did it all start? He had vision. He saw something. For change to take place in your life as a leader, you got to see what the Lord sees. You got to catch a vision. You got to understand that the people in your family, the people at your place of business, if they're not believers or if they're backslidden believers, they can't see the burning bush. You can. You can see the burning bush. You need to get to, to God. You need to get to Jesus. You need to get in His presence. Because when you're in His presence, He'll give you the plan. And it'll not only deliver you, but it'll deliver your family, it'll deliver that place of business. Hallelujah. Thank God for burning bushes. Hallelujah. But it, you got to see it. You can't be so consumed with your schedule and all the different things that you do on a daily basis that you miss the burning bush. Because Moses was busy. He was working. He could have passed it all by and not even see the burning bush. But no, something caught his eye. And he saw it. And when he saw it, he pursued it. And as soon as he started pursuing it, God called to him. Hallelujah. Now, he saw the burning bush in verse 2, and in verse 10, he received instructions to set his people free. Hallelujah. It's in that presence that you receive instructions, but you've got to have vision for it. Amen. I said, you've got to have vision for it. Let me pray for you tonight. Heavenly Father, I just lift up your people tonight, and I, I thank you, Lord, for your holy, precious word. I thank you, Lord, that, that you're, you're imparting into us by your spirit tonight the need for vision. And Father, we know that vision only comes for you. And a leader is, is the one who is responsible to receive that vision. And Father, I thank you for your people tonight that have come. Lord, I know that, that you are a God that sees the future. And Lord, we ask that you um, instruct us and encourage us. And, and I thank you, Lord, that we will be, um, be aware of the burning bush, that we will come and see and, and, and hear from your voice. And know that it will set people free. Lord, we lift up our families and our places of business. Lord, we ask that even tonight and tomorrow and the days ahead that you begin to speak to us. And begin to show us things that, that's going to benefit others around us. That we can be that leader that you called us to be. Because Lord, we know that leaders see what others can't see. And I thank you, Father, for it. We give you the praise for it. In Jesus' name. With everybody's heads bowed and eyes closed, I want to pray for those who've come tonight and they've, they've, they're backslidden themselves and they've fallen away. They've lost vision. They have, man, they, they are scattered. Their family's scattered. And they want to make a commitment to come back home to Christ. They want to be committed to being a Christian again. And I want to give you that opportunity to come home and, and, and get a vision for your life and, and to not to live this, this chaotic um, 
scattered life anymore and let God just come into your life and give you vision and give you a right direction. If that's you, I just want you to raise your hand real high and just put it right back down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who can say, yeah, I, wanna, I need to get right. I need to get vision back into my life. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hallelujah. Now, we're just going to all pray a simple prayer. Thank you. If you raise your hand, I want you, I want you to say this simple prayer with me. Put your hand over your heart. And everybody, in fact, just put your hand over your heart. Let's all pray this prayer together because I think all of us at one time or another have been in this, this area. Just repeat this. Everybody. Say, Heavenly Father, I recognize tonight that I've fallen away from you. I've lost vision of you. I've been living for myself, and I don't want to do that anymore. I want to pursue you now. I want to lay aside my life and accept your life. And I want to be the leader that you called me to be. I ask that you give me help. I need you to help me. Please forgive me. And I repent. And I turn from it. I'll live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Well, thank you guys for being here tonight. I wanted to shut down a little bit early because, um, as you know, Pastor Joey and Miss, Miss Helen, they um, had their first service um, in La Mesa, this last service. And I know that some of you guys have maybe asked, well, how did it go and all that? So they're here on Wednesdays because they have services on Sunday mornings. So we're going to let them come up and just kind of give a little brief testimony of what happened in La Mesa on Sunday. So you guys give them a hand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to Dios. He's good. Amen. We're very excited. Big things are happening in La Misa. Hallelujah. Well, I want, first of all, I want to thank y'all. We want to thank y'all for all your prayers. Amen. For lifting us up. Hallelujah. I know that some of y'all even went to the parking lot prior. So, to pray. And hallelujah. And I know that the, the, the peace of God was there. Amen, and that has, I know that has a part to do with it, so thank you very much, all of you. Uh, Sunday morning went great, 1030, I mean, we started, and oh, hi, Trish. We started, and uh, it, it, was, it was great, a uh, little different, a little different than what we start here, you know, <laughs> it's a little bit smaller, but it's cool, amen, I like what the Bible says, don't despise small beginnings, so uh it's it just going to show how much more faithful, I mean, how, how, show us how faithful God is. Five years from now, you, you go back and say, oh, man. So uh, we're, there was about, how many? 34 people in all, with kids and all, and 35 with the cockroach in the corner. No, 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 no. Miss Michelle says, cockroaches don't go to heaven. <laughs> but, so it was, it was good. It was about 15, 16 adults. So, and uh, it's going to get better. It's going to get better. It's, uh, and I'm not going to lie, I'm going to be straight up. I mean, it is a uh, plowing season. It is a plowing season. But we're gonna, this, this is the difference between uh, what God has called you to do. You keep plowing. You keep plowing. And you keep plowing plant cotton, I guess, farmers, right? You got to go through the ugly stage first, that slow stage. You got to get the rows going. You got to plow a little bit. And then you get this beautiful harvest. And so I see the beautiful harvest of Lamisa. We see the beautiful harvest of Lamisa. So, uh, and uh, let's see, what else? Um, praise and worship went awesome. Miss Helen did good. She did it with the, she did it with the CD. And, uh, it takes a little, you know, she got ahead a little bit, and she fell back a little Thanks, bit. Thanks for sharing that with everybody. That's great. <laughs> but, That's great. <laughs> but she did great. Yeah. Amen. We're learning. We're, we're learning. So we did good. You, you, you got to laugh about it. I am laughing about it. Thank you. It's, it's not so bad when you laugh about it. Thank you. And I... <laughs> then don't be upset when I laugh at you sometimes when you're up there, okay? <laughs> All right. So, what was I saying? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, anyway, so it was great. Um, it was great. Uh, the praise and worship was awesome. The lady that opened up the, the church um, 
her name was Lulu. She's a good friend of mine now. I like her. She, uh, she apparently she goes to another church, but um, she was there to open up for us. And uh, they have a kitchen in there in the senior citizen where they cook and stuff. And so she was listening to when praise and worship. She'd get down. And Israel said she got she would just move her, move her, you know, move into the music. And uh, afterwards, I talked to her and. I said, well, what are you going to do? She said, well, I, I got me some Mexican food this morning. She said, I'm ready to get some soul food. <laughs> <laughs> she said, you know, church-wise, she was going to go to her church or something. But she said, so, I said, how'd she know I was a Mexican, though? I don't know. So what do you say, sir? <laughs> I don't know where she gets that from. <laughs> but anyway, so, uh, but it went great. Miss Ellen, do you want to say something? It, it did go good. Um, as often as you say share and tush, I mean, it's hard not to know that you're Mexican, you know. <laughs> it comes out when he least thinks about it, you know. Um, and when the, when the anointing really gets heavy on him, then it really comes out. So it's, it's quite, a, quite a thing to see. Uh, but it was. It went really well. It just, everybody that I talked to afterward, they just, you know, they just had a peaceful look on their face. They said it felt like home, you know. And that was an awesome testimony to me. It just felt like, okay, this is now, this is our family, you know. We're going to gather in more people and just make our family grow and grow. And I think we're just starting off with good leadership right now. And in the future, we're going to look back and, and think, you know, we just had a couple of us, but that's the best way to start. Yeah, that's the best way to start and build unity, strong unity. So it was just, it was really peaceful. It was a great a great time and I want to thank you everybody over here too I know that you sacrificed a lot to help us in the beginning and and so many of you you kept coming out even though you weren't serving um, at the other building you just kept coming out and showing your support and I just want to thank you for that it meant a lot so those are your seeds too amen and uh, we do, there still needs tweaking and peaking, and that's what was awesome about it. You know, during the service, we'd uh, mess up here and there, but, you know, we just kept going. And, man, just had a smile, kept going. And uh, we love what Pastor Todd and Ms. Daphne, you know, they're letting us run with, the, with, with the, what God has put in our hearts, what God, what we think, what we believe was working best for La Misa. You know, they could be legalistic and say, do it like this and like this and like this, but they're allowing the Holy Spirit to work in us and show us. And we're learning to obey and learning to listen and just it's going to be a, it's an experience. Hallelujah. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. Okay. Y'all be blessed. This we hold, on, share with hold on. Don't go nowhere. We want to make it even more fantastic for you. <laughs> um, our church has gotten together and we wanted to bless you guys tonight. Um, we know that you guys sacrificed a whole lot to go to Spain. And you basically left everything to go there. And um, we know that you guys basically um, needed help also with housing and things along those lines. So our church, without you guys knowing, have um, wanted to bless you guys with a party. And also there's gifts and everything there for like you guys. And you're, you're, it's like a marriage party thingy, bopper <laughs> thing. <laughs> well, well let, me, let me, I like to call it, like a, it's called a pastor pounding and when I first got here, uh, David and Judy Jones remember this. It was when we had the gazebo. After one of the services, they, the church at the time, brought all these wonderful gifts for me and Miss Daphne. And um, they just put it underneath the gazebo. And that's what we've done for you tonight. We wanted to honor you guys for uh, your sacrifice in Spain. And not only that, but sacrificing your time here in Seminole and your family to move to La Mesa. So we want to honor you guys tonight. So you can set up a new house and get food and all that wonderful things for you guys there. So um, once you stand to your feet, give them a hand. We honor you tonight. Guys. Thank y'all so much. All right, let's party. Okay, so your cards or gifts, go ahead, and there's a table set up. We're going to have punch and cookies, so I'll give you all a head start to go set all that up, and Joey and Helen will be out there in just a second. They're going to give you guys hugs, too, so y'all be blessed. Thank you guys for the team. See you Sunday morning.